Welcome back on the Mesh Grid of Second Life. In the previous part of the tutorial, we have created a first, very basic model of the chassis run lighthouse and exported it as a Collada file. Now we will import this file into our virtual world and examine the imported model in more detail. We will see what is still missing and what can be made better. This location seems to be a good place to start. But remember that the diameter of the lighthouse will be about 20 meters, so we better check for enough space first. First locate your inventory, then select, Upload Model. A file selector box opens. Here navigate to the import file. After you have selected the import file, another pop-up menu opens. Your first attention should go to the actual print costs for your object. This is the amount of prints that you have to give away in order to raise this mesh. Remind that this is not at all related to the actual upload costs. The print costs are dependent on a few details, like number of texture faces, overall texture sizes, number of triangles, and even the total size of your object. Let me drive your attention to the upper part of the menu. You notice that you can attach four different LOD files here. Our current mesh has already been associated to the highest possible LOD level. And further down you can supply your own meshes for each LOD, and thus you can specify by yourself how your object will degrade when moving your camera farther away from it. For now we do not have any LOD files available. We even are not obliged to specify any LOD at all. But we can reduce the amount of print costs significantly by actually specifying the LOD data. Fortunately the importer can generate the necessary data. Just click the button Generate LOD. As soon as we do that, the total print costs get reduced. This is not too bad compared to creating this same tower with regular prints. But beware! The automatic generation of LOD might start to fail as soon as we introduce texture faces on our object. So let us ignore the LOD settings for now. And let us also ignore the maybe most important section, namely the physical shape settings. We will revisit this section later to discuss it in more detail. And since we are very impatient, we will now upload the model just as it is. Click on the Upload button. This is the moment when the mesh is actually uploaded to Second Life. When you examine closely what has been imported, you will see that actually two items have been placed into your repository. First there is a regular item stored inside your object's folder. You can raise that object just like any other prime or sculpted prime by dragging it from the repository to the ground floor. There it is! But there is also another item which is placed into a folder named Meshes. Here is the place where the actual mesh descriptions are stored. Think of these elements to be equivalent to the scalp maps which you already know from sculpted prints. So, let us now get back to the roots and raise a cube. Now go to the object tab in there, change the object type to sculpted. And finally change the stitching type to mesh. By now your cube has changed to a tetrahedron. This object still misses its mesh descriptor. So let us select our mesh descriptor now. Just drag it from the repository. And here it is again, just like any other regular prime. We even can scale the model by using the object editor. Print sizes of up to 64 meters in each dimension are supported.
OK, let us inspect the model in more detail. A closer inspection shows some obvious problems. The tower looks somewhat blocky. We only see sharp edges. And we have no texture here. We need to get all of that fixed soon. But now, this is a tower, and it has a platform on its top. So I am curious to get up there, and take a look from above. Come on, let us do this now. Ouch. That was not good. Somehow the tower doesn't want me to stand on it. Why so? Well, this tower has obviously got a wrong physical shape. Fortunately we can make the physical shape visible. Press Ctrl, Alt, Q, on your keyboard to open the develop menu. Then navigate to Develop, Render Metadata, Physics Shapes. The scene changes dramatically. And you see how the tower is interpreted by the physics engine. No wonder that you cannot stand on the tower. There is a quick fix for this. Go to your Object Editor. Select the tower. And in the Object tab change the physics shape from Convex Hall to Prime. Eventually we can fly to the platform and safely stand on it. So, what is the next task? Clearly we will begin with texturing the tower, but we will also put our attention to the four LOD shapes and the physical shape of the object, and then we want to define sharp edges and smooth and rounded areas, and finally we want to put some more details to the light section of the tower. So, again back to Blender, 